So in order to add this large header to the foreground of our page, we want to choose a font that complements this and also looks really, really nice. So I've chosen uh, a font called uh, Amatic SC. And I'm going to choose this in normal, so at 400 weight. You can obviously pull in the bold if you need to. I'm using Google Fonts API, by the way. Uh, so if you just Google for Amatic SC uh, and Google Fonts after it, you'll get this page up or something similar. So down here then, uh, we have the uh, URL here of the actual style sheet that we can pull in. Uh, I have this handy on my clipboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to return to my text editor and I'm going to paste this in as a style sheet like that. So if you are implementing a font from Google Fonts, I recommend you remove the uh, non-required type attribute here. And you also use double quotes for uh, these as well, these attributes. Either way, we've now got that font loaded in. So under main.css, we can actually add a, a class for something like top header. So inside of our body content, let's add this h1. And let's give this a class of top header so we can target this. And I'm going to pull across a quote here, like so. And I've just pasted that inside of the header. So at the moment, all of this looks like is, is like this. It doesn't look great. Um, so we're going to style this up and make it look really, really nice. So what we need to do is we need to define a maximum width for this header, assuming this is just a general header that's going to sit on top of this page on its own. Um, I'm going to set a width here of 100%, which might seem a little bit weird because you'd think that would happen by default. But I'm then going to set a maximum width of anything really, but I'm choosing 960. What this means is it will scale as far as possible, but it will, as soon as it hits 960, it will stop. So you'll see that come down. Um, but as I pull this in, obviously, because it's text as well, this is going to still remain looking nice. And essentially now what I'm going to do is just uh, change the font and things like that. So I'm going to use the font shorthand property. I'm going to set the size to six M's and I'm going to pull in Amatic SC and we have our cursive uh, fallback just here. Um, so let's check this out. And there we go, we have our font applied, which looks really cool. So I'm going to change the color to white, or you could do just an off-white if you didn't want it as, as harsh white. So F0, F0, F0 might be a good idea. And then what we're going to do, I'm actually going to set this to white so it's a little bit more striking. And then what we're going to do is we are going to add a little text shadow just to make this pop a little bit better. So on the X and Y offset, I'm going to do one pixel. I'm going to do a zero spread and I'm going to use an RGBA color, which is going to be black with a 0.1 or 2 alpha channel. So that's basically 20% of its opacity. So now that we've done this, I'm just going to set a margin here of 40 pixels on the top and auto on the left and the right. So what this will do is simultaneously at the top and bottom, give it 40 pixels. And because there's auto then on the left and the right, this will center itself. And I also then want to align the text cent uh, to the center, and that will give us the effect that we saw at the start of this series. So there we go. We've added our nice background image, and we've also chosen a really lovely font to go on the top of this and then style this up so it sits really nicely on the page, complementing this background. So there we go. That's how we add a lovely background image with some really nice typography on the top.